sacred treasure house sacred treasure house hello 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 i am in an event today it was unplanned i had to well i didn't have to but i was excited to be able to fill in i am doing an event here in the sacred treasure house it's an actual new group for me um some of the ladies that are in this group are actually in the crafty bunch group but it's nice because they do some of the alternate days that the Crafty Bunch doesn't do. So Tuesdays, Thursdays are the main days, but I'm happy to be here. And I'm actually very excited because I love butterflies. I really do. I'm gonna give a couple minutes here because um, Miss, um, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't hear catch her name. The lady before me is actually finishing up uh, and I wanna give her a little time to get, to get going. And plus I wanna see myself in the other group. Hey, Terry, how are you? So yeah, I'm happy to be here in this group. It's like I said, it's a new thing for me. It's a new group, um, but it's National Butterfly Day. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to make something cool and a butterfly, right? Right, right. Hey, Minnie, how are you? How are you? Like I said, um, I'll you know, thank you for sprinkling, Minnie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm actually going to be in this event today. Like I said, I wasn't planning on it. It was something this morning as I was heading out to work. I said I could maybe do a fill-in, and one of the gals um, couldn't make it this afternoon, so I'm filling in for this event. And it's um, it's another group. It's called the Sacred um, Sacred Treasure House Group. It's a new group for me, and um, um, yeah. So I'm going to be doing some a, a butterfly totem. Actually, I've got some other totems that I've been working on, and I had some bases ready to go. And I'm like, what can I do for butterflies? Well. I could throw a lot of things out there, but uh, I really wanted to do this. Now, I am not sure if I'm supposed to sprinkle myself in that group or not. Um, I think I'm supposed to be doing it for me. The other gal is actually still live, but um, let's see. Miss Tanya or whoever's doing that, you know, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do it for myself in case they don't do it because I want to be able to go into that group and to see me um so i can see comments so give me a second here guys if i can find it here it is uh yeah it's right there cool man all right so i went ahead and did that and hopefully like i said they'll probably end up putting me in there as well but i want to go back over to that group how's everybody doing today yeah i know i on um, the stream yard i actually had myself set up for that in the stream yard already uh, but I wanted to make sure I'm over in this group as well so that I can uh, so I can see comments for people that don't know me that are coming in. And I'm assuming that they're still not seeing me. You know, Facebook, it takes a second sometimes. But uh, yeah, so I'm doing a butterfly totem. Um, I guess I, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and kind of show you a little bit of what I'm going to be doing and then try to catch up because... Uh, the other lady here, that's this happy crafting circle. Actually, that's who this was before me. She's not live anymore. So anyway, all right. So here goes. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be working on. And hopefully I'll get um, shared in there at some point. All right. So some of you guys probably already saw. And some of you guys that are familiar with me already know that um, I am all about lately about doing these vertical structures, totems. And I'm going to be doing a tabletop one. Remember this one is kind of like um, find your true heart. I'm going to be doing one along the lines like this, about the same size, but with a butterfly theme. And the monarch butterfly is what I'm going with. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm a big butterfly person. I actually have a butterfly tattoo on my back. You can see behind me this way. I always it, I mirror myself. There I am. There I am. Doo -doo -doo. That little butterfly thing back there. So, and I, I'm all about butterflies. I do a lot of butterfly stuff. There I am, finally. Okay, now I'm seeing myself. Yay, Lisa. Hey, now, okay. Now I've got the girls in the other group in the event. And uh, let me turn my volume down on my phone and I can get rocking here. Okay, so, all right, 45 minutes I've got. You know what I mean? I can, I can blaze through that in a heartbeat. Uh, I am planning on doing a giveaway. I've got my giveaway tool set up. So if you hang with me till the very end, you'll see how all that madness works. And I'll give you a hashtag word and all that sort of thing. Hey, Tanya. Hey, I'm really enjoying the, the ladies I saw. Oh, Lisa, I loved your birdhouse. That was so cool with the pink and everything. I was working this morning until about one. So I was kind of in and out trying to catch everybody and whatnot. So um, I will have to go back and see a couple of the other ones. But for the rest of the day, I'm going to make sure that I, I catch everybody 
Stacy French, hello, first time viewer from Delaware. I have a butterfly tattoo on my foot, love butterflies. I don't know if you guys can see, I can't see myself in the camera, but I do have one on the back of my neck here. I actually tell you, I got it when I divorced my second husband. I was like, butterfly change emergence. <laughs> All right, so that, that's a story for another time, but I do have that butterfly back there and I love butterflies. So uh, thank you for sprinkling me. If you're new to me, once again, just like everybody else, I appreciate if you would um, give, you know, the little tap of my nose somewhere around on your screen, on your phone, see the little dots up in the corner there, and you can follow me. I'd really appreciate that. If you're watching and you don't see the little red light button in the corner, then that's, that's after the fact. You can do a replay, hashtag replay on that, and I'd really appreciate that. So, uh, like I said, what today is, um, is, like I said, it's National Butterfly Day. I've said that several times, but I'm going to be doing a monarch butterfly totem pole. It's a small tabletop version, and um, I am going to switch my screen down. Oh, by the way, for those that don't know what I do, I primarily work in polymer clay. Um, the, the lady right before me said she works a lot in clay, and I'd like to get to know more about what she's doing. And I saw Jan. Hey, Jan, I saw you. I saw you in your little clay mold today. I did. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to be made out of pretty much all polymer clay. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my table down. I'm putting myself down on my table because uh, monarchs are my fit. Yeah, me too. I was going to do a lot of trivia, but as I'm seeing everybody do, you know, trivia, I'm not going to do trivia. But, you know, anybody has butterfly stories or they want to share anything about butterflies. Has anybody ever been to, like, a butterfly garden, you know, the big ones that they, I, I've been to one. There's one down in South Florida, I exactly forget where, but those are so cool. I've been to a couple of them. Uh, yeah, so butterflies and their pollinators, we need them. And I, like I said, I love the monarchs and, and all that sort of thing. And I've got a couple little extra stories I'll tell as I get going. Now it's time for me to go down below on my table so you guys can um, see some of the process of my madness here with the clay. All right, uh, once again, for those that are just coming on, if you didn't see, I'm going to be recreating something similar to this. This is my one that I did with my hearts, Find Your True Heart. But I'm going to be doing a butterfly theme uh, on something along this line, okay? The base is a little bigger, right? It's, it's the same concept. And I'll show you, I'll walk you through a little bit of my prep work, and then we'll get going to some of the actual work. Um, this is it. So please give me comments, all that sort of thing. I am so sorry. This thing, I, I get so annoyed with my white glares. And I can't help it because I work with glass. I have a glass surface and I have, you know, a hard surface working with the clay. So I try to my best to reduce the glares on these things because I have two ring lights and an above light above me. Anyway, okay. So like I said, first off, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the process I did to get to this point. Um, I've got this base here. Basically, it is a piece of um, a wire hanger that I cut, like a straight piece. I bent it to make a curve, and then I set it inside of a little plastic container, and I poured plaster Paris in here to make my base, okay? I can color up the base and paint it. And then once it dries, you just pop it right out. So this is going to be the, the rod that everything's going to be attaching to on this particular uh, totem pole. All right, so that's going to sit over here, and I'll be kind of using that as my gauge as I go along. So what I'm going to be doing here is, like I said, I'm going to be, I've kind of done some pre-rolling and things like that with the clay. Um, happy crafting circle. Hello. First time. What? Yes. Thank you. That's where you're from. You're talking about your yay in the snow. And I'm like, Ooh, I don't think so. I live in Florida. It's sunny. It's 67 degrees, something like that today. And I'm like, it's been in the nineties the last few days. Um, I'm happy that you like your snow, but I don't like the snow. So you can have it. Anyway, polymer clay. I'm using I'm a variety. I'm using like three different types of brands. It's all polymer, but different brands. My Super Sculpey for my butterfly because it's bigger. I need it to be a little firmer. I'm using some, um, this is the Michaels brand, Craft Smart. I'm also playing around with um, this, which I don't seem to care for too much. Maybe it's because, oh, this is Crafter Smart. This is Hobby Lobby brand. It's a little, it's a little hard to condition. And even if anybody goes to their Dollar Tree, they have this Artist Loft brand. These are like $350 for several, like four little color bricks. They're super sticky, but I use them to kind of color blend and they're cheap. So I just grab them here and there. So I'm using like a variety of colors, a variety of different um, companies or uh, types. Of, well, it's all polymer, but it's just different ones. And yeah, and I love the butterflies too, darling. All right, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be working on the butterfly first. I've got the butterfly to put on the very top. But I also have some like little 
bigger items, you know, my, my little balls and my beads that I need to actually build up to the to the butterfly. So well, right now, though, I figured I'd show you the butterfly. And actually, I've painted a lot of butterflies, uh, monarchs, because I used to do stepping stones, and this is one of my favorites. So painting a monarch butterfly, this is very small and teeny, guys, but I think you'll be able to get the idea. I'm going to show you a quick way that you can actually paint it, even though it's going to be on clay. All right, so I went ahead and cut out my first one. I just got this image off the internet. I printed it off, and I cut it out just so I'd have something to go with. And I went ahead and I uh, just drew out my basic shape like this. You don't have to do it exactly like this because one thing about the monarch butterflies is they're not exactly the same. Like all the little the little orange color tones here are different. They're little sections. So it doesn't, but I, I kind of use this as my gauge. All right, so, but what I'm doing here is because I'm creating a totem, I need some thickness. I need to cut, this is going to probably be the back one or the front either way. I need to cut out another piece so I can sandwich them together so that I can hold it onto the um, onto that little piece of wire. I don't have to sandwich it. I could put like a little bridge in between, but in this case, I do want to sandwich it and make it a little heavier. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said here, is I'm going to go ahead and cut out this little image here. I did want to show you. Hey, Tanya, Simple Treasures. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so here's another way. If you don't have a cutout, here's another little idea that you can do with the clay is you can actually, if you have a stencil, you can tell I've used this butterfly stencil a lot. You can actually take a stencil and roll it over and it gives it like a little raised embossed image. And this is kind of like a guide where you can paint in your little colors. Let me pull it up a little bit. You could actually paint in whoops, the colors of the of your colors of your butterfly. And then you can just pull it off and you'll have it all pre-painted. I'm gonna be doing this one a little different. I just wanted to show you that this is an option if you wanted to, okay? All right, so like I said, right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this butterfly. I kept my clay pretty thick. It might not look thick to most people, but for polymer clay, this is actually pretty thick. This is called a slab, by the way. Or some people call it veneer if it's going over the top of something. So I'm just taking a uh, X-Acto knife, and I'm just going to run around here and cut that little image out. And I'll try not to cut my finger. This, this one's pretty sharp. It's been a few times I've cut my finger here, guys. Just I've got one healing up, and actually that was from in the kitchen. It's not fun trying to roll clay with band-aids on your fingers either. So yeah, I've really enjoyed this group, and I'm enjoying learn, uh, meeting some new ladies and getting to to see some wonderful ideas. You know, guys, we all do such wonderful things, and I'm so grateful that I I'm taking the time to actually kind of branch out and get in some different groups. And uh, I love Tanya. I love Miss Deborah, Lisa, all the girls and the other groups, uh, the Crafty Bunch and my late live painting sister group. Um, but it's nice, you know, to meet some new ladies as well. And uh, I'm enjoying it. And I thank them for um, having me in this group and uh, thinking that I am worthy of being here. So I've been looking at everybody and everybody talks about the weather when they don't know what else to talk about, <laughs> but it is a kind of an interesting topic. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I've got some beautiful sunshine staring me out right out my door and a um, little breezy, but it's really nice. Okay. So I've got the cutout. Now I can do one or two things. Actually, I think I'll go ahead and just cut it off. I have tried to watch, but it is frozen on my end. I have went out and come back in and still frozen, even went to her page and still frozen. Okay. Uh, am I frozen? Okay. I'm on my phone. Am I frozen? Is anybody else seeing me frozen? Because I'm looking on my phone and I seem to be okay. But let me know if anybody else is having problems. I'm actually hardwired in and I'm not on Wi-Fi, so I should have a pretty decent signal. Um, but if anybody else is that, yeah, likes to bring about her awesome. Yeah, I know. I do. I brag about it all the time. Okay, I'm good. I don't know. It must be a signal thing on the other end then. That's the only thing I can think of. So I guess you might have to just keep trying to come in and go out. I, I'm sorry about that, that, that people freeze. But, you know, it's that love-hate relationship we have with the Internet. What are you going to do about it? Some days you get it. Some days you don't. All right, so I've already got my cutout image here, which I guess I can go ahead and just pull that out and show you that. Okay, take all that away. You can see I've got my little butterfly shape. So I'm going to put this back on here. You know, as a matter of fact, for the sake of time, I don't have to do that. I don't have to really redraw this one. 
But what I did, just so you can see, because I'll make this the back and I'll just kind of like wing it, um, no pun intended, I'll wing it because it's a butterfly getting out, um, is I take a little thin stylus like this and I use it as a drawing tool and I just kind of trace it out and get a general idea of where um, my image is and it kind of gives it a little embossed effect. But this, I'll make this the back. There's a light image in there already at Preston from where I previously actually pressed it. See, there's that little bit of, texture right there pressed into it enough to actually lightly see it. So like I said, I'll go ahead and use this one here since it's, I, it'll save a little time and I've got this one kind of uh, already pressed in. But what I'm going to be doing is I'll be taking one and put them up against the other like that. You guys get it? And then I'm going to sandwich it onto, uh, I'll be using a dowel to because I have to actually bake this first before I can put it on there. But I'm going to put a dowel in the center and you guys will see that in a minute. And then um, I'll be able to take it off and, and just slide it onto the pole. All right, so that's the back part of that one. Now, let's see. Let's paint this little guy up. I know it's small, but I'm going to show you. I think I can do this in a small um, in a small way. Make it easy. I don't want I've got this big old thing. I need like a small paper plate for this. I know it's not too trashed out. I'm going to use this one because it's got a black background. I want you guys to be able to see this a little bit better. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna just kind of paint the monarch. Even if you're painting on a canvas, I found that this is, a, or whatever you're painting in a monarch, I found this is a pretty quick way to actually paint the monarch. And hopefully, even though this is very small, I won't um, mess it up too bad. If I do mess it up, since the clay is raw, or even if it was uh, already baked, I can go back and uh, change it. So monarchs basically have four colors. They have um, yellow, they have uh, orange, and then it's like a yellow, yellow, orange, black, and white. Those are the, the basic colors of the monarch. That's another way that I kind of like it. It's kind of easy to paint. Some of these butterflies. What is that butterfly? Somebody might have mentioned it today and uh, when they were doing the trivia. The one that's so iridescent blue and black. I love that. If you've never used polymer clay, oh, my good girl, it's my thing. Ask anybody that knows me. That's pretty much all I do is polymer clay because I found to be so versatile. Foam clay, air dry clay, I'll piddle it around with, but polymer clay is my jam. It really is. All right, so I've got a little bit of my color here. These two colors, I'm going to kind of blend them together. I need me a really teeny little brush since this is very small work. You'd think if I was going to show you how to paint something like this, I would have done a bigger version of it. <laughs> but it happens to be that I'm painting this clay butterfly for this totem, so that's what you get. All right, so I'm just going to mix the two together a little bit. I'm just getting a color blend. And so here's the deal. When you're painting in like the little, um, here we go. When you're painting in all the little yellow and orange parts, you can kind of be a little messy with it because what you're going to do is same thing as painting a canvas. You're going to go back over it with the black and the black just hides all your boogers. So you don't have to worry about it too much. And it's kind of cool. So I uh, hopefully I can do this relatively quick. I don't want to take a whole bunch of time painting this up. Like I said, this clay is raw right now, so it's soft, but you can still paint on it. I could have waited and, and baked all this and uh, done it when it was dry or hard, I guess. Uh, but um, I wanted to do it when it's raw. I usually like to do it when it's raw. A couple reasons. Number one, when it's baked in there, it's actually baked in into the surface of the clay more. So to me, it's a little bit more durable. And especially if it's going to be a piece for like outdoors or something like that. So you can see I'm just kind of making a bit of a hot mess here. I'm really just not being very careful about getting into all those little um, areas, like really clean, because like I said, we're going to go back over with the black. And of course, it is going to have to dry. And while this is drying, I'll work on some of my other pieces. Um, we'll go back over it with the black. Where am I going, Kim? I got my paint right here in front of me. And we will, um, we will go over all of this and go in between it, and it'll just kind of look really cool. How's everybody doing? Das clay and textured paste. I know. Yeah, I saw that. Like I said, I've worked with das clay before. Um, textured paste, not so much. But I, I don't know. Like I said, polymer, the reason I like polymer is you can get a lot more detail with it. And I don't, it just, I don't know. It just works for me. Uh, another thing, too, about this, like I said, if I decide to, if I don't like the way it's painted once I do this, I will go ahead and bake it. I could literally paint right over this thing after it's baked and um just paint the whole thing over again and totally that get a total different thing if i want to I'm trying to make sure i do get in somewhat into my little 
my little images there. How's everybody doing? You guys enjoying this wonderful event? I mean, what a great theme. I don't pay attention to move too much of those national things, but I think that they're great. And like I said, I didn't even realize it was Brother Friday. Are you kidding me? Sometimes I don't even know what day of the week it is, guys. I'm just like, um, okay, is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? Um, okay, I'm here. I'm awake. And um, what do I got on my to-do list today? Google? What's on my calendar? <laughs> Anybody else like that besides me? Some days are like that, girls. One day kind of goes into the next. So butterfly, anybody got any butterfly stories? Like if they ever had their own butterfly gardens? Um, we have a big fire bush right outside our, our front door. And man, no fan, if anybody knows our fire bushes, butterflies are attracted to that orange and red. And this one was beautiful. It was huge. It almost covered the entire house. And then the dang cold hit, keeps coming and hitting it, even though I covered it up. It's getting hit and it's it's kind of really disheartening. Uh, we were thinking about cutting it down. I'm like, no, I can't get rid of my fire bush. So I'm going to try to keep it up and see if we can nurture it back a little bit because it's like a 30 year old bush. Okay, so you can see here, I kind of just threw it in there a little bit. It might have a little, little tweaking, but um, you know, you can got to get the jungle just. Thank you, ladies, for coming on. And like I said, if you're not familiar with me or what I'm doing, um, reach out to me. Like I said, follow me. Let everybody know what's going on. And um, and if you have any questions, I actually do have a course, a little video course on how to work with polymer clay, like a beginner course with hand building and whatnot. All right, so we're going to let this dry. It won't take too long to dry. Um, and it's actually a pretty warm day. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute, and we'll come back to this and finish painting it. Um, yeah, I, that's another thing I love. I love oranges. Well, I love all colors, but I love oranges, orange tones and things like that. So that's another reason why I love the Marmark so much. Plus the fact of what the monarch represents in the back of the milkweed and the fact that we really need it and, you know, the endangerment and all that. Uh, but if I was trimming on the way down and just when it grows back, I know that's why I think we're going to have to go down really low with this one. Um, anyway, so that's that. All right. So now what I want to do is to show you a couple other things I had going on. Um, like the one I have here, this one says it's actually stamped. It says, find your heart. Okay. Find your true heart. Excuse me. So I'm going to do a, a little kind of a, I like to put little words and saying or something here. This one's going to say, use your wings. I was going to say, choose to use your wings, but it's a little bit long. So I'm going to do use your wings. So I've already got a piece of clay here that's kind of rolled out. I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of this marbling technique here. But this one's already pre-done. Um, like I said, this is all for the sake of time. If I had more time, I, I would go more, you know, like take it a little bit slower with everything. This time, by the way, I actually have my timer set five minutes before to so make sure that I don't mess up because I'll tell you honestly, I was in an event last week and I, I ran over and I'm like, what am I doing? I've never ran over before. It's crazy. I was really enjoying myself, guys. All right. So what I have here are these are like font, the fondant little letter stamps. I have another set, but these are kind of all put together. They stick together, which is really nice. It makes it quick. So I'm going to stamp in here. Um, with my teal, okay? I'm going to be using some teal color in this, and I've got teal clay, too, over here, so I'm going to be incorporating some teal in it. But I'm going to stamp in here, and I did manage to, to get it to where I can have all my words on here because i got a little bitty piece, and I didn't want to have to re-roll another piece. Some of this clay was giving me some problems. Use your, let me see, use your, and I think I have the wings down here, all right? So I'm going to kind of make sure that I've got enough space to be able to cut this up right. All right, so like I said, I'm just taking an ink stamp like you would do with anything. And we're stamping the letters to make sure they're good and blue or whatever color you're using. I, I just went and got a bunch of new uh, colors at um, Michael's the other day. They had a, a sale on them, and I'm like, cool, man. All right, so I'm just going to stamp that down. It's nice about it. It gives a little impression. To, it gives the color, and it gives the impression. If you don't want the color, you can just do the impression, which is what I used to do until I learned that I, oh my gosh, I can actually, actually add some color in here. So use your, so there's lots of ways that you can color with clay. Um, the inking, of course, is one way that you saw me use the acrylic paints. You can use, if it's uh, still raw, you can use mica powders. Um, you can use, uh, da, 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 da. if people see me use the charcoals and all that sort of thing you can even use eyeshadow okay so we're going to do yours right here hopefully i've got all my there we go nice and bright today use your wings 
Oh, I got to use the S. It's a good thing I looked up and caught that. I have to use the S off of my U's because I thought I had two S's and I don't. I'm glad I caught that because sometimes I don't catch things like that. Hey, Terry, how are you, darling? Terry's one of my goodies. She's one of my girls. Good to have you here, girling. All right, so Terry's been making some little things with clay, haven't you, Terry? What have you made lately? I saw your others. Here comes our garbage truck. I don't know if you guys can hear that. All right, so use your wings. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, there we go. Use your wings. So I've got that. Sorry, guys, if you hear the garbage truck. It happens to be Tuesday. Tuesday's garbage day. I've actually got my door open. That's how warm it is in here. All right, so get my letters out of the way. And so what I need to do now is basically I'm going to cut these pieces into little squares. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm kind of all about, you know, whimsical. I'm not about perfect. But I do want to kind of cut it relatively straight, I think. But if it's not perfect, it's not perfect, and it doesn't matter to me. These, by the way, if anybody's not used to these, these are tissue blades. They're little thin blades. You can see like little razors, and uh, you got to handle them carefully. They make ones with handles, um, but you, as long as you're, you know, being careful with them. I've only cut myself once, and that was actually when I was cleaning the blade, which I do often. And they're also great because you can use it to scoop up your pieces when they stick to the back. All right, which I need to do right now because I need to get the wings and the other letters separated. So you can see how it just pulls up like that. Okay, and this one, the use is gonna be a little funky. It's not exactly, but I don't care. It'll still look cute. All right. It says, I'm great, how are you? I've made flowers and a pot and Alex. Well, okay, I haven't seen a pot. You haven't shown me the pot. You need to show me the pot. Show me the money, show me the pot. I haven't seen that. Send me pictures. Post them. You can post them on my page if you want to. I like to see. I get excited when I see you ladies doing stuff with clay because sometimes I feel like the lone clay craft. I know there's a lot of crafters out there that use clay, and I don't follow every single crafter there is on Facebook. And whenever I run across one, I'm like, oh, somebody's actually working with clay. That's pretty darn cool. All right, so um, use your wings. That's going to be, you know, like in a, like going down the totem pole. And what I'll do to attach them, just so you're wondering, okay, if you had it really thick, you could slide it, literally slide it on there. But, you know, I didn't make it that thick. But what I'm going to do is I'll do it like I'm going to end up baking it onto a um, um, skewer. Okay, I have these skewers. I bake it onto there, and I put like a little tab on the back, just in case anybody ever decides and, you know, want to try something like this. You can just take like a little piece of clay like this, and you make like a little tab. You wrap it around. I'll show you. You're wrapping it around. I can't believe it's already four eleven. See, I told you my my stuff goes fast, guys. All right. So ah, got turned over. You're gonna lay it down like that, and you would just wrap it around on there like that. I'd make it a little cleaner, a little prettier. You can wrap it around like that and make like a little tab, and that way it'll it'll be a way that you can put it on your. Because half the time people don't notice the back or they don't pay attention. If it's a if it's something that needs to be like shown on the back side, then you would need to make another back piece, kind of like I'm doing for my butterfly, and make it look a little prettier, like front and back. But usually people are looking at the front more than the back. So I'll be and I might not be able to assemble this to got today, guys. Honestly, with my time frame, um, like I said, I just get so involved with all these pieces and all the little things I'm doing, and I just kind of run out of time. Let's see if my butterflies dry up. That's dry enough. I can go ahead and go back here and um, paint the, yeah, okay. So I'm going to show you how I do the black. Matter of fact, I see another little, little, little piece. Where's my, where's my little brush? Here? I'm going to touch this one really quick because I see I need to have this one done because I don't want to have too much black in there because you do, what you do is, you know, usually you paint at this end, okay? And when you see the magic of how you can go back with the black, you'll be like, what? This makes it so much easier because you don't have to be all perfect with your with your pieces. And then even that, you'll go back over and you're going to add your little dots. Where's my, my sample right there? You'll add your little dots and stuff like that. Of course, if you're on a bigger canvas or a bigger piece like that, you know, or whatever you're painting, it's going to be different. Um I've got his little body here, and I can actually got black clay if I want to use black clay, but his little body is going to go in there, and I can either paint that black. You guys can see I can either paint that black, or I can just use that piece there, and or use a black piece either way. All right, black paint. Where are we at? 
here's this black pen. Now, like I said, what's cool about this is um, no matter what you're painting, like I said, whatever kind of monarch you're painting, it doesn't matter. Of course, this one, I need a really teeny brush because I'm getting in between it. So what you're going to do basically is go in between all these pieces here. All right. Terry Woodhams, if you're watching, this would be, I don't know if you've ever, if this ever something you teach. Terry does has a, a really cool paint party uh, image. Like she, she does all these images for people to be able to do beginner paintings and stuff like that. And she teaches it a lot on her page. But I find that to me, when I was painting these and I was knocking these things out pretty quick, I found this to be a, a pretty quick method. It's just to paint around all these things like this. And that way you don't have to like, it makes it quicker. And any, any areas that you have that aren't perfect, um, you can actually just fill them in with the black. But you got to go around the whole thing. Uh, I feel bad that I'm not going to get it finished. I will obviously post pictures. And um, I need to kind of maybe, I used to do reels where I was making the reels while I was doing my thing. But I started using my phone as a secondary. Matter of fact, I need to be looking at the comments. Okay, you still here? All right, good girl. Anyway, so yeah, you can just outline all your little orange areas here, and then you just fill in the black with everything else, and it's pretty quick. You too, Lydia. I know you're a paint party girl. I don't know if anybody ever does the monarchs like this, but I found it to be pretty easy and quick. Because a lot of people get hung up with all the little tedious pieces, like hanging all those little things in, and it's, you know, it's really relatively simple if you do it this way. And then, of course, you'll go back and put your little white dots on the outside of it. Um, also, when you're doing clay, you, you know, anything dimensional, I have to paint the edges, too, to make it look clean. But um, I'll go back and do that. Like I said, a lot of this I'll end up doing off camera. I said, I'm always a little disappointed because I don't get to do, I don't really finish too many completed pieces, which is kind of a bummer for people watching me live. But that's why you need to join my page, guys, so you can see the finished products and you know, see, sometimes I do go rarely without a group and I do a project and I take a little bit extra time with it. That one's a little bit, a little bit little there, but that's okay. Anybody else paint a monarch like this? Yes, I do remember the drippy one. The drippy one is really cool. But Terry's got one that's kind of like a, uh, it's, like, it's like the paint's dripping down from the wings and it's really cool, really cool concept. Has anybody else ever painted a monarch like this where you just go in between it? And, oh, I've got a little area up there. I guess I could have painted that orange as well. But you can see how simple it is once you do it this way. Everybody ever thought about painting on raw clay before? Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to think. Oh, you guys do know that the milk, I got a story about a milkweed and the monarch butterfly. So when I used to live off the grid in North Carolina, my we were clearing the land and my ex-husband, we had this big old bush out there that was not a very attractive bush. And we're like, you know, what is this? And actually I, I did research and I found out it was a milkweed. Well, he didn't know, it was a really large one. And I'm really big on like, you know, let's try to be conservative and all of them. But they, he went and cut the darn thing down. And I was like, no, don't you dare. People knew that they'd have a fit. <laughs> So he cut this big old huge milkweed and I was so disappointed because I was looking forward to the monarchs, you know, because that's how they, that's how they bleed. That's what they like to live on, especially when they're in this area, they're not migrating. Okay. I know it's against the black. You know what? Let's move it up off of there. Let's see. Maybe. Let's see it a little bit better. Maybe turn it over. There we go. You guys see how you're getting that monarch effect. All right. And all you got to do is just paint all that black in. I was going to, if I have time now, shoot, new. i got a few minutes. I wanted to show you how to do another technique with this, uh, kind of like a, create like a saucer bead. You can do it for beading and, or, you know, for anything that you're, uh, well, they usually use it for beading, but I've been using the, uh, this, this type of um, shape of a bead to go on these totems because I think it's a cool shape. It's kind of like a, a saucer shape or whatever. But normally what I do when I do these totems is any kind of leftover clay I have, I'll just um, 
make like little funky beads and I'll use them in some of my work. And then um, you kind of put them in a thing and then whenever I need them, I'll just grab them and if the color is right. I'm trying to be fast, guys, because I don't want to spend my rest of my time working on this, but I think I almost got it. And then once that dries, if I have time, maybe I'll put the little white dots on it. And I will go in and, and fill in the um, fill in the sides and whatnot. I might even wait till it's um, till it's baked before that. I'll do that part. Thank you, Carrie. Like I said, it's small work. Um, if you see the I, well, I have my camera up. I've got a big one behind me that I did with a cross on it. And uh, like I said, when you do them larger, they're actually really fast. They don't take long to, to do it all. And when you break it down like this, it makes it pretty simple. You just outline your orange first, and then you go back with your art, fill in all your black. All right. One more. Okay. All right, we're going to call that good for now. I know I've got a little touch up. You guys get the idea. That's painting on raw polymer clay. All right. Okay, so I got that, and I'll uh, set that aside. Now, I do want to show you. I've got 19. Okay, I've got about 10 minutes, 11 minutes. So that's a little bit of time. It goes fast, but it's a little bit. All right, let me put my black away. And then I'm going to, um, thank you, Tanya. Thank you so much, girl. But like I said, you know, anybody does a marner, I can see all the little white dots. It has the little white dots on the side. And what I'll do for that is take either a stylus or the back of a paintbrush and just do like little dots dot, dot, anywhere. That's the quickest and easiest way to do little dots. Okay. So that's that. Now I've got my sign. I've got butterfly. I wanted to show you. Oh, I also did a little heart mold. I'm going to include this heart mold on here. Okay. I did this in white. I'm going to incorporate a little bit of white on here. I did back to back with the white polymer clay on this one. And I've used this several times just because I love it. But I'll paint this up maybe with like a pearl texture and I'll sandwich these two together on it as well okay do you guys understand what I mean but I'm talking about sandwiching it onto the rod I mean I'm basically just going to put it right on the little rod itself the piece of wire and it'll sandwich on there and then it'll be uh, like a you can actually move it up and down and take them off if you want to all right so I got that going on here's a piece that I had since I'm using my oranges I'm, using, I'm like oh I had this little puppy left over from something else and just playing around it's kind of wonky funky but I thought hey the colors are right so I'm going to use that one um I've got that out of the way now I do want to show you a couple things real quick I want to show you how to do a little bit of a quick marbling effect and which I think I've showed before oh oh look at these guys I did these a long time ago because I was going to do another time I've got two little guys made out of clay my little um what do you call these ladybugs i've got a couple ladybugs here i'm going to stick on the base okay and um see how this colors your hands this clay so what i'm going to do here is how i'm going to do oh yeah i'm going to show you how to do real quick how to do a lentil it's called a lentil bead or it's it's like a um it's it's how do i say it? it's like a so i call it a flying saucer it's what it looks like to me i know the shape of it but i can't think of the name of the shape so i'm going to take two colors here I'm taking a little bit of my teal, okay, and I had to work this clay. Like I said, this one's getting all over my hands. This is, um, I think this is the Sculpey brand. The colored ones do that. They will get on your hands a little bit. Um, I'm going to cut a little bit of this, this tan, and I'm going to blend them together and kind of create like a, um, a real quick marbling effect. And then I'm going to make a um, kind of a fun little, I'm going to show you how to do this fun little, you can use them as beads. Or you can make them as big as you want. Okay, this is actually getting too colored up. These colors are, that that teal is really strong. Hopefully this will work okay. When you're doing this, you add two colors together. Or you can actually use three colors too if you want. But I'm going to be uh, making it kind of like a, uh, kind of like a, uh, what do you call it, marbling effect. And hopefully the teal won't take over too much. Generally what you do is you just kind of mush it together like this. And, um. Rub it together. If you don't, if you keep blending it, it's gonna the colors are gonna blend in. But you don't, I don't really don't want them to blend in. I just kind of want them to blend together. I don't want it to become one solid color. I'm trying to get that that lighter color blended in with that other color. Okay, and you can create that effect. And you can add another color in there too if you want. 
So maybe I didn't add enough. I'm going to add a little bit more, guys. And then I want to make sure I stop ahead of time because I do want to do my tool, my giveaway tool. So I've got a couple more minutes. I'm going to add a little bit more in there, guys. This clay is bugging me. This is, like I said, this is a clay I got from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale. And generally, I mean, I've heard their clay's pretty good. I've never used it. But man, I tell you what, it's kind of, it's, it's not conditioned. It's hard and kind of giving me some problems. But, and sometimes you really got to work it. If it's very crumbly, you got to work it and roll it and sit on it and run it through your pasta makers and all kinds of crazy stuff to get it to, if all else fails, you can add a little bit of mineral oil in there to get it to where it needs to be. But, okay. All right, guys. Here comes my roomie, Karen. She just got off work. So, all right, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to over, like I said, if you overdo it, your colors are going to be blending in. My hands are a hot mess right now. But the effect I want to show you is this. Let me go ahead because my, my timer is going to go off in a second here. I'm going to put this bead up like this. Hey, Karen, how you doing? I'm glad you're saying that they are. All righty. Um, so what I've got here, I want to probably make it a little bit bigger, but I'm going to show you just for time's sake. Uh, where's my little piece of glass that I have? Here it is. All right, usually you can use a little piece of glass or something like this. this one's kind of big. So what you do is you put it in a ball. So glad you're in this group and showing me new techniques. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Like I said, a lot of people are not familiar with polymer clay or clay in general. So that's why I'm showing you. So anyway, you know, if you, I want to probably do that. I'll do another one a little bit bigger. But, you know, any even if you got a solid piece of, of clay, just take it like this, roll it in a ball, and there goes my stop there goes my five minute timer all right so then what you do is you take a piece of like even if you have like a um a window pane or like a one of those little dollar tree with the frames just be careful because those little glasses are sharp and, and you lay it on here and then you start doing this little method you kind of look over the top of it and you roll it like this you just do like a little roll on it and it starts creating this little uh point on the end of it it's a really cool funky effect you'll see in a second you have to kind of keep rolling, rolling, rolling. You don't want to over roll. You just want to kind of, it kind of flattens and makes a point at the same time. It's the coolest thing. I love making these. And they're called lentils, I guess, is what the name is. You don't want to press too much. You just light pressure on it. And this one's kind of got it at this point. So I'm, I notice it kind of walks a little bit too. So you got to be a little careful. And I'm sort of looking over it so you can see it. But I'll stop right there so you can get an idea of the point. Now you can go further. And make it more pointy but see how it creates that really cool point like that okay and i'm actually going to do this one i want to make a little bit more pointy and then i'm going to go down the center with it and put a hole in it so let's see time to see Be kath and kelly beautiful time you just got home oh okay got you guys you guys are to the, uh, talking amongst yourselves all right so yeah i'm going to roll it a little bit more because i do want to try to get a little bit more point on it and it can get pretty pointy believe it or not this is kind of fun to play with. I, I call this playing with the clay, guys. I love to come play in my clay. Everybody's got their thing that they do, but I'd like for you guys to give play a try and see what you come up with. All right. That one, I don't know, that pointy. It's a little bit pointy. It's a little bit flat. If they turn out and you don't want them as more pointy, then you can literally just start over again. This one probably isn't as pointy as I want, and I don't have time, really, honestly. I'm going to stop here in a minute and take my camera up. But at this point, what I'm going to do is just save this one. It's not bad. And I'm going to use it. I'm just going to poke a hole straight down the center of it because I'm going to put it on my put it on my rod. And I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to actually assemble it. But when you're doing this, you're poking a hole like a bead. You want to turn it. You want it, you want it to just push it all the way through because you'll distort your clay. If you go back and forth with it like this, kind of seesaw, you'll put a nice hole in it. And usually you start with a smaller like a needle and then you go the other side and do the same thing just run it through really soft because this clay is soft okay all right so we got that and like i said i'll add this one to my mix you guys can kind of see it's got a little bit of take this over here it's got a little bit of blending to it um i probably want it to be a little bit more pronounced but you can use any combinations of colors and then you can go back with metallics and add metallic colors and things like that on there. All right, guys, I got three minutes. I'm going to put you back up top and then um, we'll go through the, um, what you call it, da, 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 da. the giveaway tool. Definitely want to do that. All right. So like I said, I was hoping that I would actually be able to show you that I was going to assemble some of this. But I think you guys get the gist. 
what you're going to be doing is basically taking the pieces and just sliding them on here. They'll have all have holes. They will be you'll slide them on there, kind of make like a little slide, you know, design. And I'll kind of decide which ones I want to go on there, which ones I don't. The butterfly will be sitting on the top and uh, I'll be obviously posting pictures when it's done. These, by the way, I can customize these if anybody wants particular sayings or anything. I'm, I'm starting to make a whole bunch of these things to sell. So there you go. That's the monarch. Um, I will go back and put my, my dots on my butterfly and paint them all up and whatnot. Okay. Hands are dirty. It's okay. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, up next, by the way, I don't even know if I mentioned Mary. I'm so sorry. Mary from the Painted Peach is up after me. Mary, please forgive me. I got so involved in what I'm doing. Mary from the Painted Peach, make sure that you guys watch her, join her, refresh and all that sort of things. Right now, uh, I've got about a minute left. Hashtag butterfly. Hashtag butterfly. Real quick, guys. And we're going to put our, uh, we're going to do our giveaway tool. Put in hashtag butterfly if you want at the end of the month. I, I write the name down, whoever the winner is on each live. And then at the end of the month, I send out a $5 Amazon gift, gift card to each person so not just one person each person will get that so hashtag butterfly real quick if you want to be a part of that giveaway um i'm probably going to be going over like one minute and i'm sorry mary's probably already started but make sure that you join her and uh no you need to put right in the word hashtag butterfly hashtag but not hashtag with the with the icon Kathy, it's got to be hashtag butterfly. It's a particular tool that I use on StreamYard and um, it actually runs through it. I'm going to share it with you guys and show you what it's like here in a second. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and get that over here um, so you guys can see it. Oh, thank you, Terry Woodhams, for putting in Mary and the Painted Peach. She actually went ahead and put in her link there. That's really great of you to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, uh, go and hashtag butterfly, guys. I don't have much time. I should have had you guys do that earlier. Okay, uh, I need to share my screen and do this. Make sure I get this right. This always takes me a, a hot minute to make sure I do it right. Okay, giveaway tool, share, and then I want to make sure that you guys can see it in here. Okay, so you see it. All right, hashtag butterfly. No, you put in the hash. You don't write hashtag. It's the hashtag. It's the little cross symbol. Look at some of the other people. They're putting in like the little number symbol. That's called a hashtag. I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to do it. And then I got to run. But it's hashtag butterfly. It's the hashtag symbol with the word butterfly. Okay. That's all it is. It's not hashtag the word. Okay. Hashtag butterfly, guys. Come on. I'm running over. I'm already a minute over. I'm going to go ahead and do this now, guys, because I got to roll. And then um, there we go. We're going to do it. We're going to do the draw. Whoever's got it in, we'll go ahead and go with that. Isn't that cool? I can see who's winning, who's, who's going to be the winner. Hey, Catherine, is Kathy, and give me your email address because I will be uh, sending that out uh, at the end of the month. And uh, that way I'll have your email address to pop you that $5 gift certificate. And that was for Sacred House. Guys, I'm so late. I'm already over. Mary's already started. Go see Mary from the Painted Peach. She's always got awesome stuff. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow in the Crafty Bunch for Upcycle. Bye. Bye-bye.